this film, we're going to be focusing on Byzantine types and their legacy. And that term, Byzantium, is quite confusing because it can refer to a specific city, a city that was the capital of the Eastern Empire for many, many years. Um, that city then became known as Constantinople, which is present day Istanbul. And the same term, Byzantium, can also refer to the Byzantine Empire, an empire that ran from the fourth century all the way to the 15th century and covered a vast geographic area. What we're looking at here is an object that was probably made in Constantinople, so in that capital, probably from the 10th or 11th century. Here you can see it's inscribed in Greek, which was the common language of the empire, and here we see the names of the saints in the corners inscribed in Greek. And at the very center of the composition, we see the Virgin Mary and the Christ child. In this Byzantine tradition, this virgin is known as the Theotokos, the God bearer. And in fact, this object is not only representing the Theotokos, but another Byzantine type, one that's known as the Virgin Hodogetria. The word Hodogetria refers to the way she is pointing to Christ. She is the Virgin who points the way. And that's very appropriate because Christ is referred to, in fact, he refers to himself in John's Gospel as the way. So it's almost a name for him. He, he describes himself as the way, the truth, and the life. So in a sense, Mary's literally pointing the way to the way, metaphorically speaking, because he is going to be the one who opens the way to salvation. And by participation in Christ, by following his way, salvation opens up to all people. And so many objects of this type and also painted icons found their way into the West, and they served as points of inspiration for Western artists particularly during the Italian Renaissance. So the famous sculptor Donatello, for example, picks up this motif of the Virgin and Child. And he refers to another Byzantine type known as the Virgin Eleusa. And it's a very intimate relationship between the Virgin and Child in which they press their cheeks or their foreheads together. And that Donatello work is here in the Border Museum and it's known as the Pazzi Madonna. It's much more up close and personal, isn't it? Eleusa means tenderness and, and so you have a, a sense, another important message if you like from this different type of icon that this communication from God, which in a sense Jesus is, this message of God's commitment to be with humanity is at the same time an infant like any other who relates to his mother, learns how to respond to his mother's face, feels the touch of his mother's hands and body, feeds from his mother and is dandled on his mother's knee. And all of that tenderness is caught up in that, that second image type. Um, and we see a very much, perhaps in some ways, something more universal um, that all mothers and children can relate to, even though um, these are unique people. This is a unique woman and this is a unique child. That Virgin Eleusa type is adopted by so many Western artists and transformed, actually. And I'm reminded of a wonderful work that's in the Gemälde Galerie here in Berlin by an artist called Masais. And he represents the Virgin holding the Christ child and they're embracing, they're actually kissing. So I think we should look at that work next. Ben, we've been talking about that intimate relationship between the Virgin and the child in those early works in the Boda in the Byzantine work and then in the later Renaissance work by Donatello. And here we have it again by a northern artist, Quintin Massais, who's painting this work in the 1520s. And I think we can really see here how Western artists have picked up on that very long Byzantine tradition of representing the intimacy between these two. In this case, we might think back to the, the Virgin Eluza, that beautiful representation of the Christ child pressing his cheek against that of his mother. And in fact, that's taken up and perhaps even a step further here because they're actually pressing their lips together. And as you can see rather sweetly, the Christ child has flung one of his arms around his mother's neck. And in this kiss, I think we're reminded of the ways in which human bodies are vehicles for giving to one another, giving gifts to one another and receiving them as well. And a kiss, perhaps above all, is an act of donation, of self-donation, in which the intimacy of two people is, is realized. But both of these figures in their bodies, both in the suffering and the joys of their bodies, 
are generous givers. Mary gives life to this child. This child gives life to the world.